Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you are logging on and watching this video. This is Mrs. Patterson and Mrs. Felix, and we are coming at you live from our coronation. We are safe and sound at home, and we are on week six. This is day three, and welcome back to another wonderful week of learning at Bethune. We're going to go ahead and focus our minds with our pledge of success so that we know that as long as we are focused and ready to learn, we can be successful. So please join me in our pledge of success. I will be the rose that grew from the concrete able to stand on my own feet. I am proud of who I am and confident in who I'll be. If I'm focused, I will achieve anything that I can dream. Look out world, because once I've started, there is nothing stopping me. So now that we have our pledge of success out of the way, let's keep in mind, if we are focused, if we are ready to learn, nothing can stop us from achieving our goals. So this week in language arts, our goal to achieve is the standard known as ELA GSE 4RL5. All that means is that we are trying to explain the major differences between poems, drama, and prose, and refer to the structural elements of a poem. This includes things like a verse, a rhythm, a meter, a stanza, all those different things that we've been talking about this week. So that's what we're going over so that by Friday, we can proudly say, I can explain the elements of poetry. So we are gonna accomplish this goal of learning the difference between a meter, a verse, a stanza, rhyme, and rhythm by using a new story today. This is called a tragic story. So before we get started, let's first make an inference or an educated guess about what this story will be talking about. What I know is that the word tragic is related to the word tragedy. A tragedy is a form of drama from ancient Greece in which the main character has much bad luck. So I believe that today's story is going to have a sad ending, just like how a Greek tragedy would also have a lot of bad luck or end badly. So I think that the story of tragic story is going to have something negative coming out of it, but we're going to have to read in order to find out. The first time that you read, I want you to read independently through this poem. And if you come across any words that are difficult, place a check mark above them. And before you go to your parent or guardian or sibling for help, try to look inside around and beyond each of those unknown words or phrases to see if you can figure out the meaning of that word. So I want you to go ahead and pause this video at this time and read the story independently. For anyone who needs help, I will also be reading this story afterwards. And then I'm gonna ask you guys a couple of comprehension questions to make sure that you truly understood what you just read. So at this time, please go ahead and pause the video and read independently. Great job, scholars, reading by yourself. So anyone that needed help, I am now going to read this story out loud. And remember that our goal this week is to figure out the difference between a verse, a rhyme, a rhythm, a meter, and a stanza. So we're going to practice that after we read through this story. This is called A Tragic Story by W.M. Thackeray, and it's from the Book of Humorous Verse. There lived a sage in days of yore, and he a handsome pigtail wore but wondered much and sorrowed more because it hung behind him. He mused upon this curious case and swore he'd change the pigtail's place and have it hanging at his face, not dangling there behind him. Says he, the mystery I've found, I'll turn me round. He turned him round, but still it hung behind him. Then round and round and out and in, all day the puzzled sage did spin. In vain it mattered not a pin. The pigtail hung behind him. And right and left and round about, and up and down and in and out, he turned, but still the pigtail stout hung steadily behind him. And though his efforts never slack, and though he twist and twirl and tack, Alas, still faithful to his back, the pigtail hangs behind him. 
That was our story called A Tragic Story by W.M. Thackeray. It talks about a sage. It talks about a sage throughout the story. My first comprehension question for you is what is a sage? If you don't already know, there's a clue on page 302 towards the bottom of your story that will help you with figuring out that definition. Yes, a sage is a wise person. It tells you there at the bottom where it has the number one next to the word sage in the poem. And then towards the bottom, it says in bold the word sage. And then the definition right next to it is a wise person. So we know that this whole story is about a wise man. Next comprehension question. What does the sage want to do with his pigtail? Look back in the poem, look back at that text and see if you can figure out what he's trying to accomplish with his pigtail. Yes, so he wants to move it from the back of his head to the front. We can see that in verse number six or in that line number six of the poem. It says, and he swore he changed the pigtail's place. And then in line seven or verse seven, it says, and have it hanging at his face. So he is trying to take his pigtail from being behind him and bring it in front to his face. Very last comprehension question. You guys are doing a great job so far. What happens instead? So we know that he's trying to move the pigtail to his front, but what happens instead? Mm hmm yep. He looks kind of crazy in this story. It says he spins around and around, almost like a dog chasing his own tail. He's trying to get the pigtail to whip around to the front but it's in vain. It doesn't happen. So there might be a few words that you put a check mark by if you were reading independently that you did not know, but we're able to truly grasp the understanding by reading the entirety of the poem. We have this wise man. He wears a pigtail that usually hangs behind him. His goal is to bring it to his face. And so he says, okay, if I turn around and around, it should be able to come to the front. But we see at the end of each verse or at the end of each stanza, that last verse says, but it hung behind him. It's still dangling there behind him, but still it hung behind him. The pigtail hung behind him. So no matter what he does, his pigtail still is at the back of him. So now that we understand what this poem is about, we still have to accomplish the goal of our standard. We have to understand the difference between a verse, a stanza, a meter, a rhyme, and a rhythm. So let's start with a verse. We talked on Monday about the definition of a verse, and a verse is one line in each poem. So a verse here could be that very first line where it says, there lived a, a sage in days of yore. So I'm gonna highlight on here what a verse looks like in yellow. Ooh, not very good at using my mouse, so I know that just kind of went above it, but you get the idea. So that very first one is a verse. Anything that is just one line is almost like a sentence in a story. So a verse would be our sentence if we were comparing this to regular text. So the verse here could be there lived a sage in days of yore. It could also be but wondered much and sorrow more. So each of those individual lines are known as verses. We also have to understand what a stanza is. So I'm going to highlight now an entire stanza in this poem, A Tragic Story. So what I've just highlighted is all of those verses grouped together. When you see that, that is known as a stanza. If we were comparing this to an essay or a story in a book, it would be like a paragraph. So a paragraph is similar to a stanza, where with a paragraph, you have a bunch of sentences grouped together. In a poem, when you group a bunch of verses, you get what is known as a stanza. So we have now highlighted a stanza. So stanzas and verses are things that you can see. The other ones that we need to understand, whether it's a meter, a rhythm, or a rhyme, those are different structural elements in a poem that you hear. You have to listen for them. So we learned on Monday, and we practiced this again yesterday on Tuesday, that a meter sets up a pattern of strong and weak syllables in each verse. So in order for you to truly understand what a meter is, you have to understand syllables. Syllables are the separate parts of a word that you hear when it is spoken out loud. So in the word syllable, there are three different syllables. 
When we all were together in class, we were able to practice our syllables using the robot method where we would talk it out and say syllable. We also did the clap it method where you could clap out the different beats and you would have sil, la, bowl. And then the very final way that you can determine syllables is by putting your hand under your chin. And every time that your chin goes down, that is a new sil, la, bowl. So you can use any of those methods to help you to understand a meter. But in, in order to understand a meter, you have to understand syllables. So meters really help us because they develop what the rhythm or the rhyme is going to be. It gives us a pace to talk at by stressing certain words with stronger syllables and then having weaker ones. So I'm going to use the first example here. It says, there lived a sage in days of yore. So each of those words is one syllable. There lived a sage in days of yore. So all of those were one syllable. So that very first line has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight syllables. We then can hear when our voice gets louder or weaker. So there lived a sage in days of yore. That is a meter. We are stressing certain syllables. Those are our stronger ones. And we are making the other ones softer. Those are our weak syllables. So that would be a meter. And then we have to also understand rhyming words. I'm going to highlight here for you all all the different rhyming words that we see. And we'll start to notice a pattern. We have there lived a sage in days of yore. And we learn that a rhyming word has very similar ending sounds. And he, a handsome pigtail, wore. So we have your and wore. Both of those end with O-R-E. So we're starting to see a rhyme scheme or a rhyming pattern. The next verse says, but wondered much and sorrowed more. So I'm going to highlight more because it also has the same ending sounds. But then what happens in that very last verse? It says, because it hung behind him. Hmm. So him doesn't end with the same rhyme scheme. It doesn't have O-R-E. But what I noticed as we read through the entire poem, the very last verse in every stanza continued to rhyme. So I'm going to highlight the last verse in each standard. We have, because it hung behind him. Not dangling there, behind him. and But still it hung behind him. The pigtail hung behind him. So because all of them are ending with the word him, we have the same rhyme scheme in the very last part of each of the stanzas. We have him, him, him. So all of them end with I am, I am. So what we notice is that our rhyming pattern the first three lines in each stanza, they all rhyme. And the very last verse in each stanza does not rhyme with it. They rhyme with each of the last verses in every stanza. So now we've gone over what a meter is when we hear those stressed, stronger syllables and weaker syllables. We've talked about what a verse is, one line in a poem. And we know that when we group all of those verses together, we get one stanza. We also have to understand rhythm. If you think about any song that you have, you can just look at the lyrics. But when you put a beat to it, you read those lyrics to a beat. So we could just see Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses, all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. But when you read it and you listen, you get a rhythm. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. So even in this poem that we just read, A Tragic Story, we hear a rhythm. There lived a sage in days of yore, and he, a handsome pig, tell war, but wondered much and saw wrote more because it hung behind him. So whenever you read a poem out loud, it helps you to fully understand and grasp the rhythm that is there in that poem, in that verse, or in that stanza. So when we talk about things like meter, rhyme, and rhythm, you need to read those out loud in order to hear where those words and those syllables are being stressed and being stronger and weaker. So I just walked you through the poem itself. Your job today is to complete questions one through four. Question one asks you which statement best describes the last verse of each stanza. So I've already given you a clue 
with each of those. Question two, it wants to know what effect does the rhythm of each stanza have on a reader's understanding of how the sage feels? So it is your job to complete questions one through four and message me.